welcome back to the third video in our series of videos about how to complete the crowdsourced quilts project. In the first video, we looked at the instructions a little bit and uh, also looked at some sample designs, talking an overview about the project. In the next video, we looked at how to create a free account on p5.js.org and get set up and get started by cloning uh, my sketch. In this video, we'll look at how to start with the clone sketch and add your own block, which is basically what you're doing in the assignment. So I'm in the P5JS web editor right now, looking at a cloned copy of the original um, crowdsourced quilts starter. And I'm logged in as Murray the Cat. So uh, that's, this is the copy. And Murray needs to add a, um, another file to this to make another kind of block. Remember, all the blocks that you make are based on this parent class which describes how to construct a block and how to draw a block on the screen. Uh, but you don't modify that class directly. You extend the quilt and make new quilt blocks by extending, that's the keyword, by extending the block class with a custom block you create. In this case, it was one called four patch, but I'm going to create a new one called um, pinwheel and or our hourglass. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different names for the same block. You'll see it looks different. It's made up out of triangles. So to add a file to your sketch, um, go to Add File. And uh, the file will be called, uh, let's call it Hourglass.js. It needs to end in JS. It now appears over in the left-hand side. If I click on it, it's empty. Now, to save time, I've actually already created JavaScript and tested the JavaScript code for a very similar uh, block. I'm just going to paste it in here and then um, change the name a little bit and go on. So I'm going to call it, in this case, I'm going to call it Hourglass. It extends block and it's got all the methods that it needs to get things done. Let's hope. We'll try it. And uh, to save, just um, you can go file save or just hit uh, Control S. So save my sketch in the cloud. Now, if I actually want to copy it, which I will, I'm going to download it. There's a, a menu item that enables you to download it. But, uh, now, if I run the sketch now, it's probably going to look just like it did before. Yep, no change. I defined a new block, but I'm not using it anywhere. And I haven't added it to index.html. To make it show up. So uh, first thing to do, which is pretty easy, is let's just go into index.html and add a script tag. I'll just copy and edit this tag right here. And change it so it says hourglass.js. Now since you're in JavaScript, JavaScript and HTML are are partners in everything. So you need at least a little bit of HTML to get the JavaScript to work correctly for your sketch. And of course, if you wanted, you could have all kinds of additional HTML and CSS that did, well, HTML and CSS things. So I'm going to save that file. Still going to look the same, though. I've added it to, okay, to, to P5JS now knows about the file. But I'm not using it yet. I haven't instantiated the object yet. My quilt is still composed of just the four patch over and over again. To get it to actually run, you have to go to sketch.js. Remember, this is kind of like main. This is where the, the main function of the program, this is where uh, execution kind of kicks off. And ignoring a lot of the stuff here for now, um, the quilt's going to be four by four currently. So I'm going to add another kind of block here. And for instance, if I just want to do the simplest possible demo, I'll change this from four patch to hourglass. JavaScript's case sensitive, so the file names are all lowercase, but the class names and object names I'm using camel case. So, and if I save this, run it, it should look different. It does. That's my hourglass block, so called because of the two um, contingent triangles. Uh, now, I can mix it up. Um, 
I can have a column to compose where every other row is a different block. Not too hard to do here, uh, just in an if statement. So I'm already going through a loop for rows and a loop for columns. So here's one row, all the columns. Here's one row, all the columns. But inside the loop, let's just do this. If the row mod two, and before I say what it does, why don't you think for a second about what would this code actually do? What's the mod operator doing for me here? The answer is that, get rid of the syntax errors. The answer is that it's going to work on every other row because it's going to divide by two, and when the remainder is non zero, you're going to get the hourglass block. And my indentation is terrible, but we'll deal with that for now. Else, so for all the rows, that are odd numbered rows. Let's just put the four patch back. Put it here. Change this back to four patch. If I could type. You can see why I copied and pasted. You don't want to watch me type uh, unless you've got a lot of time. Let's run that. And sure enough, every other row is the hourglass, and every other row is the uh, four patch. Of course, you can change the colors very easily. Um, the, there's actually a, a web page I linked to that shows you uh, all the color names. You can make them up this way using RGB, or you can use the color names and the predefined colors. So I will make another color. Uh, uh, let, so that is how you introduce a local variable in JavaScript. Give me for typing names. The color, and it's, uh, I think we got crimson. Sure, we like crimson. And let's get another color. Um, Okay. See what happens. Crimson beige. I don't know how it's going to work. I'm going to apply those colors down here. I want to make the hourglass blocks crimson and beige. And it should be color three. And color four. And leave the four patch blocks aquamarine and teak blue or whatever that was, cornflower blue. Save that and run it. And sure enough, the blocks change color. So there is a lot of room in this activity for creativity. Choose your colors, choose your blocks. Um, the, the goal is that you deliver a block. If you want more to deliver more than one block, you can. You show that that block works by using it in your own quilt. And then for part B, we'll take pick blocks from lots of different people and assemble them into a quilt, maybe a larger uh, quilt image. Uh, the, the size of the quilt shown here is just for convenience. Uh, when you instantiate the quilt class, you say how big it is, you can make it a lot bigger. Uh, if you get really advanced, there are a few things I'll mention. Um, I, most of these I have not tried. But I believe it's possible to link to external resources in a block. That is to give a URL and have that URL pull in some data. You can put text in blocks. You can, um, it is in theory possible to animate blocks so they move along a path. Uh, good luck on that, but I've seen it done. Um, you could put images in blocks probably within the bounds of conventionally accepted good taste. So first, just get simple stuff to work. Pick one of the block designs from the sample blocks or from some uh, uh, URL in the uh, instructions gives you even more sample quilt blocks to look at. Uh, experiment with colors. Experiment with the patterns. Make your quilt block have a flag that lets you uh, rotate it, which is what 4Patch has. And if you look at how 4Patch does that, it just flips the colors. So you could add that 
to um, your same logic to your block and it would also flip colors. So have fun with this. Post with questions, comments, bugs you find. It's a new assignment. Probably got some bugs and we'll, we'll fix them. I think it's going to be a fun assignment to do together and I think the output's going to be really interesting. So good luck and I will talk to you online.